That's where I came from, around that far point. It's looking towards Tofino, British Columbia. Pretty remote, isn't it? The west coast of Vancouver Island. That's the beach that we uh, that we go to. And I made a couple of videos right in that corner right there in the past. And this is where we catch the mighty spring salmon all along here. It's looking straight east. That's all the West Coast Trail along there, along that shoreline. Many people from around the world come and hike it. And that's all she that's all she wrote. That's looking south to Washington State, beyond those clouds. There we go. And that's where I am on the world today. And that's where I brought all of you with me. cool is this? I, uh, Sarah bought me a fish eye lens for my birthday for the Canon camera and for the DSLR um, 5D Mach 3. And look at that, the thing's only three feet away from me. It's got this whole scene in, in view, which is real cool because I deked in behind a rock today in this little sheltered bay um, before I start heading in. Got a few fish in the boat. Didn't get the right one that I needed to make that video though, but I'll get them. But I have to go home for a couple of days and I'm going to come back out and guide for a bit. So, uh, I'll pull in and do some shares. But anyway, um, last night, like I, I was sleep on the boat and I'm at my buddy's lodge. It was just me. And there's no internet connection, there's no nothing, so you're kind of laying there in bed. And, and I'm going through the photo album on the phone. And I realized there's, I have a whole pile of screenshots on here. Comments or messages sent to me or whatever. And, uh, and I saved them and it meant to share them. And I haven't done that. So I'm going to go all the way to the top of the album here. And find some of these and I'm going to share them right now. And if I saved them I'd imagine it's because I thought they were interesting. It might help people, you never know. Oh my god, my glasses are covered in fish guts and salt water. Anyway, this is a cool little chunk of, of the coast right here behind me. It's pretty tough to get out here on foot, that's for sure. And there, I noticed there's a trail in the forest right behind me coming out of the beach with a lot of prints in the sand. I imagine it's a pile of bears. There are the same bears going back and forth utilizing the same bear trail. And if I see one, I'll videotape them. Anyways, let's see what we got in here. What's this one? No, not that one. Might take me a couple seconds to find what I'm after. What's this? I read a story that a friend sent to me, told her by a man who had stepped through a portal on a trail. He stepped from bright he stepped from bright daylight into a nightmarish other world. He immediately stepped backwards just as he heard a voice in his head, in his head say, "Gotcha." and a large, dark gray, almost black, frying pan-sized hand with claw-like nails and black hair covered forearm appeared from over his right shoulder and reached for his face and closed on nothing and disappeared as he was already stepping backwards into the bright daylight again. He turned and ran back down the trail, looking back over his shoulder, and there was a shimmer, like when you see a mirage on water on, on the road up ahead on a hot day in the summer, except that it was roughly in the shape of an oval in the middle of the trail. He hadn't noticed it when he walked through it initially. I know that this shit is real. So I screenshot that from somewhere. I think it was from the comments in the YouTube, possibly. How's that for something else? But there's a lot going on with portals. I know NASA and the government, U.S. government, is deep into portal um, investigating, throwing tons of money in there. Uh, what else do we got? Hey Steve, my name is Ian Flint. 
I've grown up in Whistler. I lived around Pemberton for five years. My dad, brother, and I have been hunting the area since I can remember and tagged on a blacktail this year with many thanks to your apps. Oh, that's good news. I think I read this, but I'm going to read it again anyway. The purpose for this message is regarding my dad's last hunt this season up near the top Tankwell trailhead via the old Hurley. He was traversing back to the truck when he said he heard what could only explain as a combination of a gunshot and a loud bark from around 200 yards. He said the first time to brush it off, the second time it sounded like it closed in to around 100 yards, and the third was between 50 and 60 yards in really thick shit. He tucked his tail and boogied back to where he rendezvoused with his partner. He was a timber cruiser for logging outfits for years and said he's only ever once been chased out of the bush by a grizzly. Couldn't explain it. I was wondering if he had had ever ever had any similar experiences. Thanks for your time and your kick-ass YouTube videos. Flint, I, I'm sure I read this before. And I'll comment again for anybody who's new here, but yeah. Um, only about seven kilometers farther up the road from there is where I had the two trees being beat on above me when I was trapping wolves right there. And then uh, another 18 kilometers farther up is where I had that tree getting beat on like it was a frickin' excavator uh, boom hitting it. And I heard the three-tone call up there one time. What else? I think that's about it for me for right around that immediate area. And all the other experiences I had near there were Mount Curry. Um, way above Mackenzie Basin, up top, above the Paraglide. Found tracks up there. Um, between Whistler and Pemberton, had a few experiences. And that's about it for me. But I know of a shit pile of experiences up over the hill from Tankwell on the other side on the um, the Darcy side between there and the top of the tank well is ridiculous amounts of action it's absolutely ridiculous tons of sightings tons of everything it's endless around there um, what do we got screenshot of funny comments I gotta skip through this lots of pictures man holy crap all right, this is from a screenshot comment on the YouTube channel, okay? John Blackwood. You want to know why the information about these things are being held from us? Steve, I have stated a wide variety of different things that catch my interest. One is how truly corrupt the world system is. I would say you wouldn't believe some of the things I know, but I believe you would. There is so much going on, it would take three months to explain it all. I do think I know what these beings are. I've expressed my opinion on that before, so there's no sense in sounding like a broken record. I can tell you this. There really is a conspiracy going on. There really are extremely powerful forces of evil at work, and they absolutely know what these things are. I watched the one man's YouTube video where he said he thought there were they were the Nephilim. They're not. They're what I've said they are no less than ten times in different responses. They're more than a man than an ape, but they were made to be more ape than we are. There is a curse placed on them for a part they played in the Tower of Babel, which by the way is about size. 200 square miles at the base. That's why they built it, in the plains and not in the mountains. If you could just download what's in my head to tell it to you, then you would understand completely, but also scare the absolute hell out of you. Just go with me on this one thing. Almost nothing is what it appears to be. Flying saucers do not come from outer space. They were here before the flood. So I'd better say lack of civilization before the flood makes what we call civilization look like a house of cards, literally. I know exactly how the stones that they find in different places around the world mesh together so well that you can't even stick a piece of paper between them. That's a gruesome tale. I know a whole lot about the different ages of man and what the Nephilim were. You wonder why they don't want us to know what Sasquatch is? If I told you that dinosaurs were the Nephilim, would you believe it? Well, they are. This Earth hasn't been here for 150 million years, and there was no Jurassic period. There were angels mating against all the birds and beasts of field, creating abominations. In other words, the gene pool was damn near completely wiped away. Dinosaurs were nothing but the offspring of angels that mated with all birds and beasts of the field, and they all died during the flood. Some died before, but the flood took care of the rest. My mind goes in a lot of different directions as it does yours. I have a hard time staying focused on any one thing because all things are connected. I can only tell you this. The people in power that know, now know, about these things will do anything to deny their existence because if they let you know, 
they knew about them, then people are going to want to know what else do they know about and the other things they know about are horrible. 70 star, 70 generations, the Nephilim were supposed to be bonded. That time has come and gone. Why do you think we have more techno technological breakthroughs in the last 100 years than we had from the flood up to 100 years ago? It's because the Nephilim are free and the people in power know about this. They're working with them to get the technology that most people don't ever comprehend existed way before there was a flood placed on this earth. I can go into more detail, but just don't have the time. Make of it what you will, but I'm no bullshitter. I'm giving you an honest account of what I do believe to be the 100% truth about these creatures and about why they'll never come out in the clear until it's too damn late. You know yourself how powerful these things are, how easily they could just snap our heads off. I myself heard one ripping trees down in the woods one night, and the power and size of something that strong still living on this earth today is mind-boggling to me. I know there are things much bigger before the flood, but I can tell you these things are not malevolent creatures. Malevolent creatures. They run from us because they have a law placed on them. But just like human beings, they don't all play by the rules. It is what it is. What it is. You go figure, because I know you know some people they have some solid proof of what these things are but i doubt even they know the level of corruption that is going on in this world right now people think it's politics that's a joke politicians are nothing more than parliament oh and that's it that's the last screenshot of that comment that was getting a little interesting wasn't it so john blackwood if you're still listening to this channel you remember typing all that out in the comments Maybe, if you're interested, uh, send us another, send an email to me and tell us who you are, where you got this information, what else you got that might help somebody on here, possibly. I think some people would be interested, some people are probably laughing, but I read that out loud. And we'll see what comes, right? Maybe somebody can add to it. I, I guarantee you one thing. Everything about our existence socially with our leaders is absolutely corrupt. 100% without a doubt. And for me, like I said before in the past, I was talking about this with some friends the other evening, how it really sucks when I... Oh no, that GoPro is still going. Myself, I get really let down when I'm speaking with someone I respect and all of a sudden I catch them bullshitting me. No matter if it's a innocent bullshit or a serious bullshit, it doesn't matter, either way, once I see that somebody is bullshit me, look me in the eye and bullshit me, I'm done with them, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll still be friendly, cordial with them, and maybe go fishing, with whatever, but as soon as they say anything to me, it goes in one ear and out the other, and I'm done, and if I follow that rule in life with mainstream news, social media, the people in control of all those outlets, politicians, well, where, what, what do you got left? What's left? I mean, obviously, every single one of those, the people, mainstream news and social media, the, the big, the big tech owners, the monsters, they have all misled us and lied to us. They've all tried to suppress us and stop us from speaking freely. Every single one of them. So how, how does one go about listening to them ever again? Which I don't, myself. I wish I could encourage people to drop mainstream news and the. Uh, the social media monsters just kick them to the curb because the only way they have power is from taking it from you. It's the only way. Uh, what am I getting on about? Um, I've only had coffee with them this morning. Again! But what I'm getting on about is the people are the only route to honesty and true honest knowledge. It's the only way. If anybody could please show me another route to finding the honest truth about everything besides it just being from the people, let me know. I'm all ears. I'm wide open to hearing where we will get our honest information from today, 2021. Where is it going to come from? Who's it going to come from? Who do we trust besides the people? Hmm? Please somebody tell me. But that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today and right now is I am listening to every single human being out there I can and I'm trying to get as many voices shared with the people as I can through this channel. Because 
I just don't know any other way that we can get honest truth out there to each other or at this as at this time right bit of a babble here we go let's find something else I have a bush pilot friend who operates out of Homer I asked him about Port Chatham and he told me this story he said he used to have a fuel cache stored on a pristine sandy peninsula that runs out into the bay about a mile from where the old settlement was located he runs a float plane so it's common practice for them to stash barrels of fuel in easily recognizable locations so they can refuel and extend their flight range. These barrels are 55 gallon metal drums and weigh about 450 pounds when full. On one trip they pulled up to a cache and got out to recover the barrels only to find themselves overwhelmed by the stench of petrol. He knew something was very wrong and found both drums missing with the trees he cached them under torn to shreds. He searched around and found them with the tops ripped off and flattened like they were made of tin foil. These two three-foot-high drums were stuffed into a crevice between two boulders that was about ten inches wide. Holy shit. He said he could not imagine the power it would take to force a pair of steel barrels into a gap that size. He took this as a clear indication that he is not welcome there and he has never returned to the area. He now has a new stash many miles away. Jo Josh Catro. C-O-T-T-R-E-A-U. I think that's a screenshot, Josh. I screenshot that. I think it's probably from the YouTube channel, I would imagine. And what an interesting share that is. I would almost, if I get the coordinates from that man to where that those barrels are in the rocks, I would almost go there myself and check it out and, and take some photographs or video of that. That would be absolutely something else to see firsthand. And creepier than shit. Ten inches wide. Port Chatham. Port Chatham. Everybody look up Port Chatham, Alaska. Google it up and see the history about behind that deserted community. Some crazy shit's going on around there, but I would love to see those barrels squashed and left in that crevice. That would be something crazy. All right. David Parkell. This is a screenshot from you. Looks like it's probably from YouTube. FMO, feed them beans. I lost my brother-in-law above the Timberline 22 years ago. They said, don't go in this territory. The locals, but he did. Now gone for decades without a trace after 20 days of searching by air and ground with dogs. They found his tackle box and fly rod. Nothing else ever since. Let the urban dwellers live and die in the concrete jungle. Their minds don't comprehend. Bless you, Steve, because those who spent time in the woods easily relate. The rest is fodder. Holy cow, David, that is, uh, that's something else. I don't even know when I screenshot that. I screenshot that July 22nd, 2020. But David, if you're still listening today, we'd love to hear more, more on that if you want to share. It's a sad story, sad occurrence, obviously. But uh, I wonder what else is going on around there and if you've heard of anything else that maybe some people should be aware of. And if so, you can, you can share it here, all right? Here's a quick little spiel I screenshot from somewhere. Ridicule comes from a place of fear. People who ridicule others are afraid that what they are saying might be true and that would shatter their ignorant grasp on reality, which com comforts them. Cognitive dis dissonance, most of the time, seems to cause anger and bullying. So true. All right, what's this one? Yeah. Well, I know there was a bunch here, you guys, and I'm going to keep looking. All right, what's this? Oh, I can't quite see. Oh, the name's just chopped out of the screenshot, damn it. All right, here we go. Here in the Appalachian Mountains, there's been many crazy sightings from UFOs to Bigfoot. They say there's no cougars or mountain lions here, but yet they had to kill two cougars here in the mountains. So here's a little story about me and my wife. We're camping in a place called Devil's Creek near Cumberland Falls, which Indians owned in their time, but war changed that. And for a man taking that land, the Indians said to have put a curse upon the land for someone to die every year at the falls, and so far, as long as I remember, they have. But back to the camping trip. We put our tent up in the middle of nowhere. We eat, we ate, told stories, and the normal folk lore, and we decided to turn in. We had these four-foot candles that burned for hours. 
So long about 4.30 in the morning, I came awake, kind of hearing sticks breaking, but not real loud. And all of a sudden, the candle just went out, and the fire pit just dimmed like someone turned a switch off. Here I was thinking my wife was asleep, not hearing this, when this god-awful deep growl moan sound that just raised every hair I had on my own body. I grabbed my 357 and said, I hope my wife didn't hear that, and she too late. You could hear, you could feel this thing breathing on the tent. Now, no one in their right mind would be playing a prank on us. Let on, we're 20 miles away from help in the middle of the mountains. So whatever it was, I was prepared to go down fighting. What? It growled a couple more times and faded away. The first sign of daylight, we packed our stuff and headed towards the truck as fast as we could. We'd never been back. Me and my wife cannot bring ourselves to ever go into the woods camping again. I've even been offered money to go back there and and we want yes there's things on this planet we've not yet seen 22,000 acres is a big place for something to hide that's just one small place to camp there's thousands of places government owns here in the mountains no telling what lives in them wow that's different I don't even know where the screenshot was but we just shared it if that sounds familiar and that's yours and you want to share more do it here um, here's a screenshot. I must have thought this needed answering. Momo's Great Adventures YouTube channel commented on our channel. Glad you're taking some time for yourself. Curious. I've gathered that one of your main goals is to provide a avenues for folks to share their experiences in a safe place. That's goodness. I've also gathered that you want to get our governments to come clean with the public about what's out there and what's really going on. What's your position on just how this will happen? Is sharing more stories going to force the government's hand? How do you envision the scenarios to play out? What are your thoughts about the general public would do with the true information? Thoughts on show social impacts? Oh, uh, I don't know. Right now, the government can kiss my ass. I, the government needs us. We don't need them. I don't need any of those grease bags to, uh, to tell me anything of what's going on in the face of this planet. I need the people to tell. It's the people who know. The real people, right? And what's going to happen if the people do get all this knowledge? Well, the people are going to be able to handle it, handle life, possibly live life a little more with a little more confidence, possibly live life with more knowledge that can help us live a little more free, possibly, right? But either way, whatever's going on, the fa on with the face of this planet, we are here to and we deserve to know everything every single thing there isn't a human being alive as far as i'm concerned that is in the position to hold more knowledge than me or you there just isn't sure if it comes to national security and, and warfare secrets that's a whole different ball game over on that side of the field i want to know about what's going on on the ground where i walk where i hike where i hunt where i swim where i camp i want to know and uh Shame on you if you're a human being and you know the truths and you keep it from your fellow human being, your fellow neighbor. Shame on you. That's what I feel about that. Uh, it's about us. The government was created by us, for us, and somewhere it got out of hand, man. All right, when I was, here's a screenshot from Jacob Lorenzo. This is a screenshot, November 19th, 2020. When I was 13, I went to Washington State to visit my uncle and his wife for a year. He lived in a place called Okanagan, Washington, close to the border of Canada. Well, in the winter, we all took the snowmobiles and sleds for a two-week camping trip to an old log cabin about 40 to 50 miles northeast of his place. We left super early, still dark, and I was on the last sled with my older brother getting towed by my uncle's snowmobile, hanging on for dear life. We're going up a hill around a corner, going a little fast, and the sled tipped a bit, and my brother and I fell off and watched the lights from the snowmobile drive off over the hill and became silent. Oh no. We waited for my uncle to see us, not there, on the sled and come back. We waited for about 20 minutes in the pitch black and we heard huffing and puffing, like someone running, loud. We were in the edge of a forest, and the trail went up to the trees and over the hill. We heard this thing blowing and crashing through the trees so fast It'll happen in a matter of 20, 30 seconds or so. 
and it ran right past us. It was so loud and the smell was putrid like piss and shit so strong. When, oops. when I heard this thing running towards us, I immediately thought, bear, until I heard it wasn't running on all fours like an animal would. My brother covered my mouth with his hands and he pulled me to the ground by the tree as we heard this thing running right past us. I'll never forget the sound of the footsteps running long bipedal strides. And when the wind blew us, I almost puked because I was so scared and the smell. As soon as we didn't hear it anymore, he grabbed my jacket and yanked me up and went over the hill. We walked as quietly and quickly as we could until we finally saw my uncle's lights coming back. I've never been so relieved in my life, even till this day. I remember I kept telling my brother we need to climb a tree and wait, but he kept saying we need to go, we need to go. When my uncle got back to us, we tried to tell him what happened, but he told us to get on and hang on. We got to the cabin and we told him what happened, and he didn't seem surprised at all. He looked at his friend and they had an in instant worried look on their faces. He said, don't worry, and don't walk off, even a piss. Nothing happened the whole time at the cabin, but I could see my uncle was more vigilant than I've ever seen him. So yes, I believe there is a huge bipedal creatures, no doubt in my mind, unless anybody has a better conclusion as to what that was, they can suck it. <laughs> wow. I agree, Jake. Jacob, they can suck it. All right. We all know, we all know, unfortunately, the clubber no return is quite substantial, isn't it? It's amazing. There's another screenshot. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's go see if this thing's still pulling. Yep. See the tide starting to swing. I don't know what this is about, but here we go. Brian Lindsay. This is a comment, screenshot. Steve, your program is riveting. Keeps you on the edge of your seat wanting more. I've experienced an encounter as several of my friends and acquaintances in my surrounding community have. I've lived in a special place in eastern Oregon called Hell's Canyon and Wallowa Mountains area since 1975 when I was 16 years old. I'm now approaching 62 years of age. I've logged the woods and hunted this area ever since. There's a lot of activity in this area in the 80s and 90s, sightings and encounters from good, reputable, good people and friends during this time. When we, as people in the community, talked or mentioned our experiences with other locals, we were, of course, laughed at and ridiculed. I was kicked off a website that was supposedly interested and welcomed stories about Bigfoot in the Northwest for commenting about a story that someone told about a good friend of mine. I thought, screw you guys. I was just trying to clear up some inconsistencies in the story that was being shared as there was some disinformation about the encounter. Anyhow, as a good successful hunter and outdoor enthusiast, I have noticed a decline of stories and encounters of these beings in this particular area since the late 90s. Most of the activity now seems to be north of us around the Enterprise area, north into Washington State throughout the Blue Mountains. I'm wondering why the activity of these beings has shifted out of our area and farther north. Is it past wildfires? Is it human activity, which in my opinion hasn't increased that much in this area as it is pretty vast? God no, it's not from declined habitat as Oregon doesn't log shit anymore in this state. Anyway, feel free to comment and use my name if shared. Maybe it will get some of my buddies and people in the community to share the experiences they've had but didn't have a platform in which to do so. Thanks for all you do, Steve, for bringing this topic to light. Okay, Brian, uh, I hope sharing this, screenshotting sharing this a year later helps. Uh, maybe if some people from your community are listening, they want to share, they can email me at tellmystoryhowtohunt.com or share my story at howtohunt.com if they want to get stuff shared with us that'll help them or help people through the channel, right? And what do I think of the lack of activity of the shift? Um, wildfires for sure. I think uh, Ron Moorhead took Dave Plytus up to where they had the, where they created, not created, sorry, where they recorded the Sierra Sounds, and that place got devastated by wildfire, but only 
a patch around where they had their camping experience did not burn. How amazing is that? And they haven't had anything happen there since. So uh, I firm believe that wildfires absolutely have an effect, without a doubt. But maybe some people listening today from your community will uh, share what they got. You never know, right? There's a lot of screenshots here, man. All right, what we got? Back in 1989, unfortunately, the screenshot has blocked out the name, unfortunately. I was about 16. I was tracking and four handling hounds for a big game hunter named CJ Proc. His main hunting cabin where he would meet all his clients and keep his dogs was in, the, was in Young, Arizona. A small town where people would wave at each other as you drive past one another. One evening he asked me to go up Cherry Creek, a couple of miles into the canyon, and look to see if there were any bear tracks because we had two guys coming up from Phoenix, which is where I'm from. They wanted to use their tags before the season was up, so I took my little 40 pound pit bull with me, like I always did, and headed out for the long hike. Well, on the way back to base camp, my dog suddenly stopped and began with this soft, deep growl that she did whenever she was in the presence of a bear or lion. I taught her to do this so I knew what was going on. So, as I normally did, I stopped and squatted down with her between my legs, one hand on her collar, and quietly listened. She started to act really weird, like wanted to, wanting to bugger or spook, trying to go the other way of the direction she was growling at, which kind of freaked me out, because she was not afraid of anything. But I couldn't hear or see what she had been telling me. That's when I heard twigs snap from something moving closer to us. This is when my dog pulled loose from my grip, with the tail between her legs and took off towards home. This really freaked me out because she has never done this before. Leaving me by myself with nothing but my flashlight and what I thought could have been a black bear. I stood up and clicked on my light in the direction of movement to show off a bear before I was mauled. To shoo off a bear before I was mauled. And that's when I saw it. It was a seven foot tall, very skinny humanoid. And it put its hand up to block the light from his face. I was in complete disbelief of what was about 30 feet from me. Now the sight of this thing scared me so bad I tried to turn and run. But as I began to move, its hand dropped and it looked right at me. And that's when I realized it was doing something to me to where I was paralyzed and could not move. It slowly started to move and I began to panic and started to yell for my dog who came running back to my position. While my pit bull was about eight feet from me, she suddenly stopped like she was frozen in time, with only her head barking and growling at this thing in front of us. When I heard it moving again, I, st I, started, to my, I started to feel my heart drop, and my legs began to get all rubbery feeling. I'd never been that scared before to where my legs wanted to give out. But as I turned around to face this thing, I realized it was not moving closer to us, it was moving away. For the next 30 seconds, maybe, I watched this thing disappear into the dark woods, and that's when my dog and I were free to move again. I suddenly, I suddenly feel to my hands, fell to my hands and knees, and my dog started to run. I was looking for my flashlight. I called for it to come back. Reaching for her as I pulled myself up to my feet, I took off jogging with her by my side all the way home to base camp, never telling anyone what happened that night. But a couple of my best friends back in Phoenix a couple months later. Watching this video brought back a flood of memories that I had forgot all about all these years. I'll be 50 next April. I guess I had blocked it all out this time. Wow. Now I hear what you're reading on your phone. OMFG. Oh my god. I have chills and my heart drops as I'm trying to type this up. It's taken me almost 35 minutes to do this comment because I'm so freaked out right now. It's not that I believe him, it's that he just reminded me of the night that instilled I'm not tripping. I believe this thing had the ability to make you freeze in your tracks, like some kind of mental thing or something like, like that, I don't know. But it did it to my dog too, as it took its time to escape. It wasn't until it was out of sight that my dog and I had regained control of my body. And that was it. Um, I don't know what your name is, sounds like a creepy ass experience for sure 
and maybe if you do hear me sharing this you could email in and tell us exactly what it was you saw but you know all the indigenous peoples have said to not look in the eyes of these beings because they'll steal your soul apparently or they they turn you to rock it's been the term has been used they'll turn you to rock what obviously means you're gonna freeze in your tracks and you can't move right crazy man in our screenshot Steve a quick way to improve the sixth sense is to decalcify the pineal gland the pineal is the source of our intuition and visionary abilities fluoride dental hygiene treatments calcify the pineal take food grade diatomaceous earth and harataki meditate reduce stress avoid smoking and alcohol there are more techniques and products only use organic and most importantly do not get the covid test and most importantly do not get the covid test look at how far they shove the swab in your sinuses so close to the pineal and it's coated with chemicals that will affect you mm. there you go all right that's a screenshot that i saved and shared ralph oswald the screenshot and this was saved january 22nd Steve, I think a lot of military have had these strange encounters but have been scared to come forward or have had to falsify their, falsify their own reports. My best friend and hunting buddy told me about a crazy encounter with something right outside his guard tower in the tree line. Well, this had, well, this had got his nervous attention as whatever it was started shaking the tower. Within an hour, large lights came across the sky moving in directions and speed not capable of human capabilities. As his shift ended and his report accompanied him to his watch commander, he was tired and just wanted to get warmed up and sleep. As his watch commander glanced over his report with a couple deep grunt laughs, he peered up at my buddy. He immediately ordered him to the office next to them that was empty. He sat in the office. Uh, he sat in the office and began to wonder what was going on. His watch commander came into the office, shutting the door, be the door behind him. He dropped a new incident report and slid it towards my buddy. He was then ordered to rewrite his report, but in the words his watch commander dictated to him. As he finished the report, the WC dialed a number, said a couple of numbers to the other person on the phone. My buddy was flown out of that base back to another duty station. He was ordered to say that nothing was seen or heard military base was in Alaska well no doubt that's going on all the time right no doubt same with police officers as well right shitty deal shitty deal what the people have created isn't it giving government power creating government and giving it power it's real shitty Robert Schumann this was screenshot January 23rd at 17, walking in the woods of West North Carolina, when you're standing in a horseshoe-shaped path, knowing it is on the other side of the ridge watching you. I could have either gone down a ravine or I had to go by it. I know that it took me probably two minutes. It was going to look at me, walk by. It never threatened me, but it was bipedal. I walked slow, never turned around. I had a weird feeling a half an hour earlier. Nothing in the forest, so I picked up my pace. But before I put my left, but before I left, I put my left food, I left food, I left my food on the trail. I held it in midair. That foot I heard was five feet away. I froze. I made it back to camp. I was curious. I watched me fold up my browning sawtooth blue tent, clean my sight, load up from behind the dumpster. I was a small kid, played music night before campground. Poor show hard that night. I was alone, money. Blah, blah, blah. All, right, all right. All right. What's this one? Rudy Bairdy. It's from, I believe it's from YouTube. I'm native, and these things, these beings do exist. I have family that have seen them. My cousin's daughter even took a pic of a young one in the open while she and her friend were walking home in a path from a beach. Seen the pics, and yep, standing there is a copper-colored young Bigfoot about four to five feet tall and it looked thick if that makes sense as usual the pic is a little blurry but they also took pics of the footprints and those pics were as clear as day 
You can even see the skin pattern on the toes like a fingerprint. Also have two buddies that seen a little person about a foot tall while they were wood cutting and the little fellow wasn't pleased with them wood cutting in the area. They immediately left the area and never went back to that area again. My late pops told me what my grandfather had told him. When the end is near, strange creatures will start to come out and be seen by many people. I've had many strange stories that my late father told me. He even told me about his UFO experience and the craft got so close to him, he said there were windows and all I had to do was tiptoe to see inside, but he decided not to look inside the craft. I know many creatures exist and have always existed. Just another day in our blue and green planet. Enjoy listening to the stories. Keep it up, Steve. Rudy, thanks for that comment back in the day, back, you know, whenever that was, a little while back. Appreciate it, man. If you want to email us in any more information you can from your community, or maybe possibly your father told you, I'd be interested in hearing it, man, without a, for certain. The Bible tells us that it is a time of tremendous trouble and evil. We can have short periods when peace breaks out, but God wants us to know what's coming in the long timeline before Jesus returns. Jesus is returning to take all this evil head on. Jesus is coming again as a warrior and he will be victorious. God explains all this in Revelation, the last section of the Bible. Also, the section called Daniel. Another screenshot I saved. Now, here's a big one. This is like, a, is a, I don't even know where I, I took a photo of this text and I can't read it. The bad angle lighting. Sorry, I'm babbling. Oh, here is a uh, screenshot from an email. And I don't mind following up on this because we never heard from the name and mention in here. And maybe the person mentioned this email to me would love to contact us and uh, give us his side of the story because I'd be interested in hearing it. And I did this as a favor to someone and I'll do it again. I've been harassed. This is a quote from the email to me, personally no. I've been harassed, slandered, ridiculed, and stalked for years since I started putting this out. I caught some BFRO prick red-handed. I have him on camera, his vehicle, license plates, etc. I know who he is. I pulled his voice from his videos and then stated publicly who it was. His name is Todd Prescott, punk ass who has an obsession with me. He can't go public with stating what he had witnessed because that would incriminate him and he'd be charged and put through the court system. I used to expose him personally but now I slam the BFRO org instead, making them look like the assholes they are, suppressing information about the truth of Sasquatch and their paranormal abilities. I even post on their site on Facebook, slamming them as dirty as a dirty organization. I appreciate if you would help my cause by stating the harassment I've received from them. How those like myself who've gotten so close to this truth that there is an agenda to make us look like hoaxers, etc. This is partly why I've recently put my channel behind closed doors, hoping to keep that asshole out. He's a sick, twisted mind that needs a white jacket and really long sleeves in a rubber room. He's used numerous aliases, which are easily to pick out as I've learned his ways over the years. I'm basically asking if you would slam the BFRO and use my name. The people like myself who get close to this truth are harassed and stalked by this dirty organization. I understand if you don't wish to go there, just a request to help out. No problem, Mike, from Sasquatch, Ontario, Ontario Sasquatch, either one. But that's an email I just read, shared it with you, who he requested I share with you, and I got no problems doing it. And I would love to hear the other side of the story from the person mentioned, wouldn't you? Sounds like a, a bunch of really weird shit going on. Why not expose the bad people if it's true they're bad? I guess everybody's innocent until proven guilty, but it sounds like the proof is possibly in. Right? Alright, what else have we got? I'm going to switch over to reading emails again, but I, I've got so much here. What's this one? Evening Steve. From up on the Yukon, 19 miles from the Alaska Yukon border. I'm a First Nations elder with a bit of information on what the three of us hears and saw their home being built. A few years ago when my sister-in-law was still alive, we were out hunting in fall time down the Alaska Highway from our homes. We were getting ready to leave when she said that there was a cave on the side of the mountain that wasn't there before. She passed binoculars to her husband, my younger brother. 
than onto me. Yes, there it was. But how did she see that hole among a huge mountain, a bunch of spruce trees, and with poplar, birch trees, and willows galore, and it was a very tiny clearing. The next time we saw the hole was so much bigger. It showed definitely that there was more work done and even being worked on than the next time. Then next time, there were many trees put up in front of the cave to be hidden from us on the highway. Later on, we stopped at a place on the highway, crossed it, and as we were standing on a hill, a very loud hollering was coming across the lake. It kept it up. And as listened to it, we finally stopped. I figured I'd shouted, I figured it, I shouted that hard and long, I would have to take three breaths. All right, so I figured if you were to shout that hard and long, it would take you three breaths to do it. I would have to take three breaths to keep up with that shout. My conclusion is that it had killed a bull moose and was shouting to tell others at home to come and carry the meat home. What do you think? I left quite a bit out, but I can fill you in later if you want, Steve. Respectfully and truthfully, Stan Peters. Stan, if you're still listening, why don't you email me at sharemystoryhowtohunt.com or tellmystoryhowtohunt.com and email me everything you want to email me. And if I would be absolutely curious if you would to possibly go and take photographs of that cave or, or even hike up there, right? Hike up and take a look, maybe, and share it. Or not. Or even get somebody with a drone, fly a drone up there to be safe, right? Off the Alaska Highway. Wow. Well, I guarantee you I've driven past the exact same spot more than a few times. But anyway, if you uh, recall leaving this comment on my channel and you want to email all of us and share the information through me to all the people, please do. I'd absolutely appreciate that. Um, I think... That might be all. That's all I got. All right, I did it. I finally did it. I shared all the screenshots that have taken over a year to uh, share with all of you. But anyway, but anyway, I'm gonna get going. I gotta get motoring, and I'm gonna stop at that place that I was creeped out in the woods um, last summer. I think it was. I remember I was sitting on that log and I couldn't stay. Well, I'm gonna stay there again. I'm gonna, well. I'm gonna go. Uh, well, I'm gonna go sit there again, and I'm gonna do some email shares from that log. And we're gonna see how it goes. Anyway, share my story. Howtohunt.com. Tell my story. Howtohunt.com. If you got some information that will the people will benefit from, or if you have something and you need to get off your chest, so you'll benefit from doing that. Get it into me. All right. I'll see everybody soon.